Today is going to be 80-2. We're going to create function compositions. And so today's objective, you guys are going to be create a composition of functions, and we're going to examine the different properties of function composition. Now remember, this would be a good time to pause and perhaps ask a few questions. Now, the section will force us to be creative. And what I mean by that is it was kind of awkward when we were working with these compositions because as we started noticing, it, was, it started getting easier and easier and easier for us to start nestling these compositions. But what if I were to ask you to create the f of g of x, like if we had to actually create this? What if we took a function and say, well, this function is going to equal the composition of two different functions. Now, for us being able to break this down, this is actually a good thing. And the reason why it's a good thing is because once we get to calculus and we start taking the derivative, like the chain rule for instance, it's going to be really important for us to understand this composition so that we could uh, take the derivative of certain functions that start becoming increasingly more complicated. Now one thing that we need to remember is generally speaking the function should be simplified in terms of x. Okay, this function should be simplified in terms of x. So let's take a look at this first one here. It says write each of the following functions as a composition of two or more functions. Well it looks like this function, this 3x minus 1, that's inside this absolute value. So what if I said one function is this absolute value of x? And then my other function is going to be 3x minus 1. Because now if I say f of g of x, now what I'm doing here is I'm taking my g of x function and plugging it into my f. It's like I'm taking this value here and I'm plugging it into my f function here. And so the composition in this instance of these two or more functions is going to be this statement here. And so I would say f of x is going to be the absolute value of x, g of x would be 3x minus 1, and so the composition would look like this. If I said my composition was this, that would be incorrect. Okay, that, that would not work. Now notice, one of those things that I said that we need to do is one of those functions needs to be written in terms of x. There's only an x here. right? Even though there's an absolute value, this is written in terms of x so that when I plug this in, that x transforms into the composition that I have there above. Let's try another one here. So it's how would I be able to write this in terms of x, right? There can't be x squared. There can't be any of that. It just has to be in terms of x. So having said that, let's see. What if I said this bottom part? What if that's just going to be x? What if I say that this becomes 2 over x. And if I say my f function equals 2 over x, that means that my g function would have to be x squared plus 1. And so then I could say f of g of x would have to equal yeah, in this case, 2 over x. And then I'd have to take this x squared plus 1, and I'd have to plug it into that. Uh, another way, I guess you could even take this a step further, because this is not written in terms of x. I could also say h of x equals x squared. And so therefore, this would now have to be x. So then I could say f of g of h of x. So 
So I have to take the x squared, plug it into here, and then I take this entire statement and I plug it into here. So I would have to change this. So that's another way of doing it. Um, I would say both of those answers would have been acceptable. And in this instance, this is now a composition of three or more functions. For this one here, I have this square root of x. So if I, I can't have that square root of x, so what if I say my first function is x plus 1 over x minus 1? And then I can say my second function would be that square root of x. And there's no way for me to be able to manipulate or be cheeky or anything like that with the square root of x. And so this would be the composition of f of g of x here. For this one, this one is going to allow us to be or force us to be a little bit more creative about it. I'm going to have to take, say, 2x plus 1 over 3 minus 2 times 2x. Right, because that's going to be a little bit different. And so that 2x that I have here, I could say that's in terms of x. So I could say that this is going to be, what if I said f of x equals x plus 1 over 3 minus 2x. And then my g of x was then going to be 2x. Now is there anything that I could do to simplify that further? Now if I were probably thinking, well what if I make my 8 or my 2x into x? What if I say I have and I make this into x? Well the issue then becomes how do I then plug this into there? Right? Because if I'm plugging the 2x into there it would have to transform it into the original. Um, if I make this into x and that into 2x, well then I'm just repeating myself because I already have a 2x there. So it doesn't seem like it's reducible at all, so I wouldn't need to have this h of x. And I think that's it. So my answer is going to be f of g of x, and then those are going to be the two functions that I break it down into. So a few things that we did cover in this lesson is that we took a look at these composition of functions uh, we talked about how, as a property, we could take it and we can break this function into two separate functions in which we examine like what we did here. And we said that this is going to be important for calculus and how to examine it. So this does conclude our lesson. If you guys do have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.